Oh hi, welcome back to another episode of Black Dot Ministries and Paints. Kevin coming back to you this week. We're continuing the Space Wolf's Adventure Box with the Tech Ultramarine that's in the box. I know I've already shown you all how to do an Ultramarine, but in this week we're going to show you how to do a speed painting version of it. I'm going to start out with a basic speed paint, and then we're going to also show you some extra credit stuff at the end that you can do just to take it up to the next level. Since this guy, I'm painting it up as a sergeant. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now in the name of speed painting, we are going to be trying to use the contrast paints. This one we're coming through with Ultramarine Blue, so aptly named. Um, I will say that this took forever to dry. I am only painting one model here, so it may not be an issue if you were going through and painting five, painting a whole squad of them, something like that. But I don't know if I'm sold on this contrast paint stuff yet. At least not for individual models. Uh, the airbrush just dries so much quicker. You can hit it with a coat of paint, give it a couple minutes, let it dry, and hit it with another one and you're just cooking. So, to each their own, I guess. Now, one of the negative things I noticed was the shoulder pads just looked a little bit splotchy. So, I took some of the Ultramarine Contrast paint and just a tiny, tiny bit of FW White ink. We just hit this from the top down. It just, I couldn't do it. I could not sit there and say, here, this is how you paint this piece of crap. No, nah, let's make it look a little bit better. So, that's all I'm doing is just smoothing it out, giving a subtle highlight, but it's really no big deal at all. The other problem I noticed with this was the recesses were really not dark enough for what I felt as though this model should have. So we came through with known oil. We watered it down a little bit just because we didn't want it to tinge the surface too much, but it definitely added another layer to it. Again, we're doing a speed painting, so I didn't want to try and bust out the oil washes and all of that. I would definitely recommend with these guys using an oil wash if you have access to it and you can just slam it together. But if you're doing speed painting, you have known oil, badass, let's do it. Now, in the interest of speed painting, obviously you want to block out all of your colors that you can with one coat of paint, one pass without it being chunky chalky, looking like hot garbage. So we're coming through with Abaddon Black. This is a little watered down just so it doesn't, you know, go on really cakey. But at the same time, it's not too thin to where we're having to do a billion layers. We're coming through and we're just laying Abaddon Black down on top of all of our stuff that is black and then anything that we're going to eventually tinge silver. While we're at it, we're going to hit all the uh, grenades on him, power pack components, his pistol, and then any creases in his armor. Um, there's also a little, I don't know, an ab plate he's got going on. Get that while you're at it. Like I said, the key here is just one stop shop. You want to hit it and quit it. Moving on to the helmet and the little purity seal, we're just hitting it with the uh, Mephiston Red. I watered this down a little bit too much, so definitely don't have to go this watery. Again, we're looking for as minimal amount of coats as possible to cover up this stuff and just keep cooking them along. I think at this point we were about 10 minutes in. I mean, we were cooking. Now granted, I'm not counting dry time because dry time is not going to be the case if you're painting five of them. So this is not a speed painting tip right here. This was a bad idea as far as speed painting is concerned, but it came out with a good color. We mixed dryad bark and corn red together, and we just kind of made our own proprietary color here. I was looking at the bark's art, thought the color looked really good, wanted to see if I could pull it off and mix it up. You could definitely just use dryad bark by itself. You could definitely use rhinoxide, whatever leather color you want to go to. For the gold trim on our ultramarine, we're just coming through with Retributor Armor. It's what their colors are. Um, nothing crazy here. You could sub it out for a Vallejo color. Whatever your favorite gold is, it really doesn't matter. But here we're just picking out all the little armor trim pieces, anything that it needs to be gold. Um, there's a couple pieces on his pistol. There's a couple pieces on his shoulder, obviously his trim, and then the Aquila on his chest. Your model may be different. Just give it a look over and see what needs to be painted gold and knock it out. Just be careful so you don't mess up your blue, but really at this point we're just slamming colors home to, to make it start looking good. Now 
So nothing crazy here. We're coming through with Xandri dust and we're just laying in a nice base coat on the purity seal. We're laying in a nice base coat on the ropes on his chest. So like I said earlier, I am going to show y'all two levels to paint this model. I'm going to show y'all where I stopped the first time and that was a one hour mark and done. And then I'm going to show y'all where I took it another 20 minutes maybe. And we took it to a whole lot nicer standard and level. So it's always something to think about how much time you're willing to put in there. Anything is better than unpainted gray models, but at the exact same time, if it's 15 minutes more, it may be worth your time to go through and put in that little bit of extra work so you can get a little bit higher standard. For the silver bits, we're just coming through with your basic lead belcher, your boy, your clutch. Apparently during the whole uh, coronavirus apocalypse thing, this was one of the top three paints of total online sales from GW. It was Agrax Airshade, Known Oil, and then your boy Lead Belcher. So apparently this thing comes in clutch on more models than any of us really realize, which makes sense. I've gone through four or five pots in the last three years just from painting different silver components. I've never painted uh, any silver army. So apparently we use the crap out of this. While I got y'all here checking me painting this silver, I just want to throw out there that we are six subscribers away from 100. That is freaking nuts. I am jacked and tan about that. I am just stoked. Thank y'all so much for coming back, checking me out week after week. This is crazy. Never expected this crap. I thought my wife was the only one that was dumb enough to come back and listen to me talk and not just get rid of me. So the fact that y'all going out of y'all's way, clicking that subscribe button, clicking them like buttons, that's dope as hell. Y'all are the truth. Thank y'all again. Let's get back to painting this dude up. Now at this point, we got all the primary colors locked in minus the eyes. I, for some reason, forgot to do that to the very, very end. So you'll just have to wait to see how I do that. But at this point, you could call this cat done. He's, he's pretty well locked in, squared away. All the primary colors are there. Tabletop standard has been met. I mean, we could leave it here but we're gonna keep going. We hit Caribou Crimson on the helmet. Next, we come through with an Agrax Urshay. We start lining out the ropes on his chest with that Agrax. We hit the little leather, uh, I don't know, loincloth on the front of him, hit his little purity seal. So nothing crazy here. We're just working careful so we don't mess up any of that gold or any of the blue that we laid down. We're also hitting his holster while we're at it. So nothing crazy at all. Like I was saying, this is, where are you gonna start really putting in the extra work that you don't have to? So it's completely optional. To shade down the golds, we're coming through with a Reckon Flesh Shade, but nothing y'all haven't seen before, nothing y'all hadn't seen me do before. This is just basic 101 how to shade down your golds. So we're just being careful here. We're trying not to jack up our blue, trying not to jack up any of our other colors that the golds may be butted up against. We're working a little bit thick here, a little bit thicker than I normally do. So just keep that in mind. You may have to do some extra cleanup than you probably weren't ready for if you go too hard on it. To highlight up the helmet, we come through with Mephist in red. All we're doing here is just cutting in highlights. It shaded it down. We're bringing it back to the original tone. We're hitting the top of the helmet. We're hitting the sides of the helmet. We're hitting the little mouthpiece. Anywhere that light's going to naturally fall and reflect off of it. We also go through and hit around the top part of the ring on the purity seal itself. So nothing crazy, just working careful. And to add a little bit of interest to his loincloth, we just really, really glaze this down. You'll see it hit my thumb and it's almost dirty paint water. We're just hitting that and trying to add a little bit of differentiation in there. So to start highlighting up our golds, we just come through with liberator gold. Basically, all we're doing is hitting the very tops and very most outer parts. So like here on the Aquila, hitting the very most outer edges to cause a little bit of differentiation. The loincloth here, we're hitting the tops of these little gold peaks to make those glint. Same with the shoulder pad. So nothing crazy at all. There is a decent amount of gold on here. So just work around him. Give it, give it an artistic eye. If you think the light would hit it and it would glint, just throw that highlight in there. Don't be afraid of it. It's going to smooth out and blend together real nice. For his rope, we just come through with Screaming Skull and we start hitting the tops of all the little nodules on the ropes. Nothing crazy here either. This is all painting by numbers. We want it to just 
be a little bit of a difference between the very, very top highlight and the bottom where the Xandru dust is in the crease. To throw some extra highlights here on this helmet, we just come through with Wild Rider Red. All we're doing is working a smaller section of what we hit with the Mephiston Red earlier. So on the top of the helmet, we're hitting it with an edge highlight all the way around. Then on the side of the top, we just hit that with the line highlight to try and add a little bit of interest in there. Same thing with around his muzzle. We also come through and hit the top of the wax part of the purity seal. We hit about the top 50% circular just to cause it to be a little bit different, look like it's got a natural light highlight falling down on it. All right, so I know, I know, I know, but Kevin, we're doing speed painting. Why in the hell are you putting Fenrisian Gray edge highlights in here? I know. Like I said, this is not required at all. This is if you want to take it from A to B, if you want to take it from B to C, just that next level up. This is where we start hitting into the higher, higher standard. But here we're not doing all of them. We're not doing every single edge on every single plate of armor. Scratch that. Like I said, this extra little bit took me 15 additional minutes. I was working quick, working fast, staying busy. So here we're just hitting some of the more critical edge highlights that are going to give you the most bang for your buck. You're not gonna have to sit here and work forever to put in these edge highlights because these are the easy ones to get to. They're easy, they're fast, just knock them out, okay? So again, if you don't wanna do this, fantastic. Don't do it, you don't have to. But if you're looking to take it to from A to B or B to C, the next step up, it's worth it. To finish off the golds, we just mixed a little bit of Liberator Gold and a little bit of Runefang Steel. We're just hitting the very tippy tops, right? We worked 60% before maybe, now we're down to 20%. We are just working finer and finer. So work around the model, find those highlights you did before, and then just add this little touch in there. And it really just ramps it up just a little bit more. All right, so this should have been done back then. For some reason, I did it super out of order. We're doing the eyes. We hit it with the Caliban green base coat, and then we do about 50% of the socket with moot green. It gives it a solid effect. All right, guys, so here's how our little Ultramarine Sergeant turned out. I think he turns out great, especially for putting in an hour and 15 minutes. I cannot shake a stick at that. This is a good standard for the minimum amount of time that we have into this. There's plenty of guys that they can drop three, four, five hours into a mentor, and yeah, it's going to look a whole hell of a lot better. But when you constrain it to this time frame, it really just turned out and looks great. So again, guys, this has been Kevin with Black Dot Ministers and Paints. Thanks for checking this video out. Thanks for checking me out week after week. I'm glad I can keep bringing you this stuff. Hopefully, y'all can take something from this, use this for your army, get these suckers knocked out so we don't have a whole horde of gray plastic everywhere. So... Again, thank you. If you found something useful here, please like, comment, subscribe, share this video. It would really help out the channel grow and it would mean a lot to me. I would appreciate the heck out of it. So until next week, we'll see you then. Bye for now.